Hey, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co, and this video is basically a giveaway for Chronicles of Zunagar Age of Darkness, and also kind of an advertisement for Foreteller. Although not a paid one, they don't even know I'm doing this video, let's give you some backstory of what's going on here. Basically, I was running a game found booth this past Origins, and I reached out to Chronicles of to Creative Game Studios, and said, hey, we'd love to put your game on one of our tables. And they're like, excellent, here you go. Also, here's a second copy to give away to your community which means I have to give it away to the community. That's that's part of the process, right? That's how this thing works. So that's this copy over here, a base game of Chron Chronicles of Jonagar, an excellent game I highly recommend. And also, uh, they also, it's worth noting, they have a Dante coming up on GameFound, so you can go ahead and give them a follow and appreciation for you know them doing this. But I was like, okay, great. How and where am I giving this away? I could just give it away and, you know, a week in review or a random video here and there, or I could go ahead and take the opportunity to basically talk about Foreteller and the, the connection between those two is that Cre Creative Game Studios, Creative Game Studios, Chronicles of Jonagar does have a Foreteller implementation coming for specifically for, um, uh, the apocalypse, but they are backwards compatible in everything. We're going to go through all of it. And so I was like, you know what? This would be a good opportunity to talk about how I think Foreteller is pretty cool. And I think that you probably know Foreteller exists, but you may not know how many games it exists for. And they're constantly adding new new games to the library. And the audio narration in these games generally is pretty cool. So basically just, I, I'm a fan. That's what it comes down to. I'm a fan. And so to that end, what I'm going to be doing over here in this video is I'm going to be showing you just the various library stuff Foretella has. And again, they this is this is basically an advertisement, but not paid. They don't know I'm doing this. This is just me being a fan of Foreteller. And so to that end, we're going to go through all these things. I will timestamp various games. I'm going to be showing you various things. I won't be showing you every iteration of Gloomhaven and Frosthaven and Forgotten Circles and all that, but I'll be showing you various things as we go through this. And in terms of the giveaway, this is the important part. Number one, never reply to anyone in the comments who says, congratulations, you won. Because I mean, I'm, sh I'm sure I'll throw a giveaway in the title of this video, but I don't want you uh, falling prey to any scammers. Although YouTube has been better about those scammers recently. So if anyone in the comments says, you've won, now just send, you know, $49.95 for shipping to random email address that's not that's not how it works the only email you should be contacting in any way for anyone who wins a giveaway is going to be alex at boardgameco.com and the important part is i'm not even announcing in this video who gives who's winning anything because you have to enter your comments first you have to do all that and so to that end i don't actually know when this video is going up so what I will put, I'll put in the description of this video when I'll announce the the winner. Usually it's going to be in one of my weekend reviews. So not the weekend review directly following this video, but probably the one after that is when I'll announce the winner. But again, I'll put that in the description. What I will not put in this description is how you're going to win. This is actually the first time I'm doing something a little like fun with giveaways in the sense that usually with giveaways, I'm just like, go ahead and comment for Tyler in the description and congratulations, you'll have won. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to make it a little harder for you. You actually have to watch this video, which honestly, just from a pure stats percentage, if you're not interested in this video, don't waste your time. It's like, whatever, what's the chance? But if you are interested in this video and you do want to go through that effort and leg work and all that and actually finding out how to win over here, because at some random point in this video, I'm going to tell you how to comment, what to comment, and more importantly, where to comment. Because if I just told you what to comment, you'd scroll down to the comments, you'd be like, oh, everyone's commenting Foreteller, that's the keyword. So rather, there's going to be a very specific video I'm going to reference throughout the midway through this video at some random point, and that's the video I'm going to be pulling comments from, and you have to kind of watch this video to do that. Or someone's going to post how you actually win down below and ruin it for everyone. That's also possible. In any case, and again, I don't really recommend that just for the sake of winning the giveaway. I recommend doing that if you're actually interested in the contents of this uh, video and all that stuff. And so to that end, let's go ahead and start this conversation water first. So, let's go to dive into this. This is Foreteller. Foreteller, if you don't know, Foreteller is a audio narration system. They actually have been dabbling in background music as well, I believe, but they're an audio narration system for your board games. The idea is you pop up your board game, you sit it down, you pull out your app, and you go ahead and hit play on whatever scenario or mission you're up to, and then suddenly there's like, you know, background noise and narration and all this stuff going on to enhance your user experience. And I find that I, most of them does, most of them do enhance my user experience. Most of them do add value to my gameplay. I do highly recommend good speakers. I specifically recommend the JBL Flip over here. I'll throw an Amazon link down below. It'll probably be a referral link just in case you buy it. Although it's a shame, because I got this when it was on sale for like $35 at one point. And right now it's like $90, which I think it's very, very cool. At $35, everyone should own one. At $90, different conversation. But you can also use Camel, Camel, Camel to uh, go ahead and sign up for the updates. Now, if you do that, I won't get the referral thing. Camel, Camel, Camel will get the referral thing. But you'll save $65, $55. You'll save $55, which is much, much cooler. So I recommend some sort of Bluetooth speaker system. I recommend Foreteller. And you can dive into your, your experience of whatever game you're playing. Well, 
of the 20 or so games that there are and just hopefully have a better, more enhanced, more involved experience. And to then, let's go ahead and start showing you what we got in Forteller over here. This is what Forteller has right now. I don't even remember what Forteller started with. I don't remember what games were first present. I know they had Gloomhaven and Madara early on. I think they had Ice of Fair and Guard early on, but I don't know everything they've had and what they've added in the exact timeline of it. But for right now, they have around 20 or so games. We have Gloomhaven, Madara, Frosthaven, Forgotten Circles, Jaws of the Lion, Above and Below, Bardsung, uh, Lost Levels, Chronicles of Guard, Deck of Wonders, Detective, Dungeon of Infinity, Sleeping Gods, Now or never, near and far, the Isofarian Guard, Kinfire Chronicles, and Sleeping Gods Distant Skies with more being added all the time. They are constantly reaching out. They usually work with these larger narrative uh, games that give you a more immersive experience. And they're, again, the, the quality of everything they do is absolutely top notch. And that's where I, we're going to be doing as we go through this video is we're going to be playing you samples over here. Also, the site is not perfectly interesting. Interesting. Okay, I see what's going on here. It wasn't perfectly mobile, mobile optimized because it was overlaying, but I see it's more of a scroll down thing. It's just a narrow window I'm on right now. But we're going to go ahead and start off playing some audio narration, and everything will be timestamped so you can jump through it. I'm just going to take breaks drinking, drinking water while I play things for you so you get a sense of how it plays. The tracks are easy to spot. Vermlings have never been known for their subtlety. You follow the scratching and indicators of a body being dragged until you find yourself approaching the walls of Gloomhaven. The sun is very low, but something isn't right. That isn't just a shadow cast across a lower section of the wall. It's a hole. The Vermlings have made a nest for themselves by burrowing into the wall itself. How industrious. You crouch low and try to sneak closer. But they must have guards watching the entrance. There is a shrill shrieking, and then a number of vermlings jump from the dark, brandishing their dull, poorly made weapons. No choice now but to defend yourself. Luckily, you've managed to get your second wind, but you will definitely need a nice, long bath out of this ordeal. That's the kind of thing you can expect. It's also worth noting, by the way, that the nature of me playing this on camera means my mic will probably filter out some degree of precision. Hearing this in person is even better than what you're hearing. Uh, you can go to the website down below and try any of the any of the sample audio bits, and you'll get a much better sense because it will really deliver it well, not from speaker to mic, but directly to your computer, to your audio, whatever you have. But they have that kind of background noise. It's not just reading. It's a lot more going on for it. That was Jaws of the Lion, and that will enhance your experience. It's not even a question in my mind. Throw on a good speaker, throw on Jaws, throw on the Fortel app, and you'll actually get more of a sense of, of immersion into the scenario. This is where background noise can be incredibly cool as well, and I don't know their full system of background noise. I haven't really delved into that yet. I know they have like background noise for Final Girl, but I haven't heavily looked into what they provide there. But the idea of starting with that narration and then having like a little background noise and chittering in the background for either scenario based or in general could just overall just drastically improve the level of well immersion i'm going to use the word immersion multiple times throughout this video it's also worth noting that one thing i totally forgot about but is you know relevant here is there's a bunch of games that they don't even have on the site yet uh Tenaris adventures for example they just announced Tenaris adventures uh, they have Tenaris adventures is going to have um uh, we know the contest Tenaris Adventures is going to have four narration as well, which I don't have any of that in front of me. I'd love to have that if possible, but I don't. And so we're going to move to Madara. Madara, if I recall correctly, is a little less background noisy. I haven't played as much Madara, so I don't really know that one quite as well. But I believe it's a little less background noise and more focused on the uh, speaking. But maybe I'm wrong. Let's dive into it. Chapter 1. Before the Mast. Nightingale crept almost silently through the crowd, eyes fixed on her target. There were at least a hundred of her fellow students here, thronging about and chatting excitedly in their teams of four. Her victim wasn't watching anything but the cigarette in his fingers. He didn't stand a chance. Air rushed around Nightingale as she jumped, latching onto Zeke's back with both arms like a monkey around a tree. Zeke! Her voice came out somewhere between a squeal and a screech, loud enough that a few nearby students turned to stare. Her friend grunted and spluttered, the cigarette tumbling away from his mouth. You trying to kill me? Nightingale dropped to the ground behind him. You don't need my help for that. She extinguished the still smoldering cigarette with a well-placed step. You've been here as long as I have. Two years away from Earth and you're still poisoning yourself. 
Zeke only grinned in response. It also makes you smell terrible, someone said from behind them. They both turned, and Nightingale's eyes widened as she saw her sister Shayla standing there. Nightingale was usually thrilled to see her, but today was different. Today, Shayla was one of the proctors on the most important test of their new lives, the Magical Aptitude and Skill Test, or the MAST for short. Now this is going to be a bit of a small hot take here, but I think Madara actually does foretell a, a disservice. The reason for that is Madara is going to be the only one on the uh, this their site that's currently free. It's free. You don't have to go ahead and buy it. You can just download it and get a sense for what Foreteller is. Except in my opinion, it's not a sense of what Foreteller is. And this is something I should probably message them directly about this, or they'll see this video at some point. But I should probably let them know, like, you should have some sort of warning that... Madara's level of narration is not the same as the others, and anyone diving into Madara to get a sense of what Foreteller brings to the table is basically getting a free sample that is not indicative of the actual quality of the content, which is tricky. I don't know how, why it's free. I don't know whether that's, you know, Madara paying for it or them. I don't know the exact nature there, but I think it being free on their store does them a little bit of disservice unless they have some sort of warning in place. It's kind of a free sample. It's just not, in, it's like, here's this free ice cream that it's plain and vanilla and all the other stuff you can't try in any way to get a real sense of what we offer, which is interesting. It's not bad, and it's, just for the record, it's 22 hours and 39 minutes of content. Madara has a ton of content behind it, and so the, I mean, the amount of stuff that would go into it, sure, but again, I don't think it's actually a good indicator. You're gonna see as we go through the rest of this that that is possibly the worst quality content you'll see on it. We are gonna do Frosthaven. I know we did Gloomhaven, but we're not gonna do uh, Jaws of Lion. We're not gonna do Base Gloomhaven. Sorry, we're not gonna do sleeping, uh, no, uh, Forbidden Circles. We're not doing Forbidden Circles, and we're not doing Base Gloomhaven. We're doing Jaws of the Lion, and then a little bit of Frosthaven. See? Much, much better. With your head down, wow. you march. One foot, then the other. You try to block out the pain, the throbbing in your toes, the numbness in your face. Just keep the rhythm, you think. One, two. But the wind isn't so easily ignored. It claws at you, whipping up ice and snow like tiny hooks, making every breath difficult. Your skin is thick. You always prided yourself on that. But nothing is thick enough for this. You are walking through the north, through the frozen wastes, a place not meant for living things, where only the hard and the lost dare to go. Of course, that's probably why they hired you. It's been ten days now, ten days of plowing through snowdrifts as high as your waist, and there's still no sign of the town. You're part of a reconnaissance team, the first group sent in to check on the Empire's most distant outpost, Frosthaven. It's a place forgotten by most of the world, a tiny settlement carved out of the frozen wilderness which, for six months out of the year, is wholly cut off from the outside, isolated by towering, unbreachable drifts. But as of last week, just enough snow has melted off the Imperial Pass for a team to get through. So then, here you are. No one really knows what awaits you in Frosthaven. One struggles to imagine what sort of people could survive six months in a place like this. But whatever waits, you hope, at the very least, they've left a fire going. That, again, the background noise, the difference between that and Madara is so intense as far as what it brings to the table. I also should probably start cutting these off a little earlier because they're starting to get a little long. Or just grab a solo game and start playing a solo game in the background while I wait because why not? But either way, we're going to move to the next one over here. And that's going to be Above and Below, which is one that, Above and Below. So I've played through Jaws of the Lion. I've played through, um, I started, I've played the first scenario of Madara. I've played through uh, lots of Frosthaven so far. And Above and Below is... Above and Below is one that I played a long time ago, one time, and I don't remember much about it. 
I honestly don't have any idea. Oh, I closed the tab. But in Frosthaven, it also has more than that. It has, it has more than just the basic narration. It has uh, the, the road cards. It has the scenarios. It has all these other side things. And also kind of tracks things to a degree. Like, as you get these choices, you can choose certain arcs. You know, you have a road card. And the software also gives you the opportunity on it. So it's not purely just a reference. It kind of manages some of the sequences and flows for it. I do recommend, if you're playing especially Frosthaven, Gloomhaven, I recommend making sure to check the actual scenario guides as to the things you unlock, the stickers you place. I have found that Fortale is not a hundred percent accurate when it tells you the things to do which can lead to slight issues uh, I'm, su I'm assuming they're aware and working on that stuff but that was one of my experiences when i dove into frost haven at the very beginning but from there let's dive into above and below you step into the thick darkness of the cave lanterns held high a thin layer of mist between your feet ahead the cavern wall becomes a steep slope and you spot what seem to be mushrooms at the top of a high ledge do you attempt the climb or continue searching the cavern floor? Yes, yeah, so this is a shorter one, and this is where it's actually interesting. If you go through this, you'll see it tells you the audio length. So, for example, Frosthaven was, I think, like $17 or $18 for like 20 plus hours of content. And over here, above and below, is $10 for around two hours and nine minutes of content. So, there is that aspect you have to take into account. I don't know what their pricing is based off of. Some of it might also be based off of just how many people own the game and therefore how much you need to charge for the costs of it to be viable. Enough people bought Frosthaven that, you know, if you hit X percentage of the audience at $18, it still might pay for 20 hours, versus above and below might have fewer copies in existence. That might be how they probably of how they price it, I don't know, but obviously you also need to take into account what you're paying versus what you're getting. Over here we have Bardsung, an error occurred in that one. The skies are painted a crimson hue by the time you draw close to your destination. The setting sun casting elongated shadows from behind the trees. Each is the silhouette of a dagger ready to strike just as you are at the hobgoblins. Although the rich color reflects warmth in your eyes, rather than murderous intent. Your guides have long departed. Years of ingrained fear. It's of little matter. The land has already begun to take on a downward slope as you approach the depression, and you can follow the aged dirt path the rest of the way. You even have a map, drawn by a venerable dwarven villager that claims to have ventured into these depths during his youth complete. So I'm going to stop it there a little longer, uh, but that's basically Bardsung, which I actually played through a decent amount of Bardsung, but I didn't actually use Foreteller for Bardsung. I think I have it. I'm pretty sure I have it. I just happen to not use it, but that's going to be Bardsung. And again, you can see over here, it's $12 for like eight hours of content, seven hours and four minutes of content. And right about now, before we move to the next one, I'll go ahead and reward all those you who have stayed this long and talk about how you're going to win this copy of Chronicles of Drunigar, or how one of you is going to win this Chronicles of Drunigar. So first of all, in general, uh, shipping is going to be covered in the US. Internationally, I can cover up to $20 worth of shipping. Past that, it's one of those things like, uh, they, um, Creative Game Studios doesn't cover the cost of shipping. They sent the game to me. I'll pay for the shipping and all that. But giveaways can sometimes cost money, even if I'm not providing the game itself. But it's going to cost money. I'm not asking you to pay it. I'm more than happy to contribute. You guys are all incredible. And the whole reason I can do what I do. But point is, uh, $20, in the, $20 internationally covered. US free shipping covered. This is Chronicles of Dunagar, Age of Darkness. And to win it, you have to go. Let me just check my screen notes over there. You have to go to the Chip Theory Games channel. Okay, the Chip Theory Games channel, and you have to go to the Elder Scrolls Betrayal of the Second Era official trailer. They have multiple, multiple videos. I'm not going to link it down below because that would ruin the whole fun for everyone else. But it's, again, the specifically it's the official trailer for the Elder Scrolls. Uh, in case you're wondering, it's a uh, 2 minutes and 21 seconds long. If you have that video, it's the correct one. Again, type in Elder Scrolls official trailer, Chip Theory Games, you should find it no problem at all. And just type the word foreteller on that video at any point in any way. Uh, you could do it as part of the reason for that, by the way. There's a reason because I would love, I have no clue if uh, Chip Theory Games is talking to foreteller or not. And I should probably message Chip Theory Games and hopefully they don't mind that I'm doing this. But I think that the Elder Scrolls, I think in general, Chip Theory Games would be incredibly cool with foreteller narration. And in particular, the Elder Scrolls, I think, has that larger appeal and amount of people who bought into it. I mean, it did $4.7 million for raise and funding, and I'm sure it's only going to continue as the late pledges and all that stuff. But in that, for the case of that one, I just think it would be very cool to have the Elder Scrolls with Foreteller. And so you can type whatever you want. You could say it'd be really cool to have the Elder Scrolls have Foreteller narration. You could just use the word Foreteller. You could do anything clever in any way, shape, or form, as long as it has the word Foreteller, and it's on the Elder Scrolls official trailer on the Trip3 Games vid channel, the 2 minutes and 21 second long video. 
there you go. That's how you'll win this. And I'll pick the winner again, probably the week in review, not following this video, but the one after that is where I'll pick the winner. And with that, moving to the next one, we have Chronicles of Junagar. The timing, that's perfect, actually. That's actually funny because people who skipped to Chronicles of Junagar thinking it would be here with the timestamps are going to just miss it, which means I have to start the Chronicles of Junagar timestamp now. Which means it's to Chronicles Jernigar. So over here, we're going to go ahead and play this one. I actually haven't heard this yet. I've played Chronicles Jernigar before they had the narration. Drunigar has always been a land mired in conflict. From the moment the mortal races met on its rolling hills, tall peaks, and primeval forests, there was bound to be strife between its wary peoples. With the discovery of magic, however, came the potential for dramatic change in the world, for good or evil. Magic was discovered when a human became the first of the Ascended. These extraordinary individuals achieve a form of immortality by merging their consciousness with the very fabric of magic itself. The Ascended continue to influence the world long after their physical death and are worshipped as gods by many in the land of Daren. The art, as magic came to be known in the world, became the ultimate tool for achieving one's goals and dreams. Centuries after discovery of the art, it has shaped the fears and hopes of countless people, and the heroes and villains that wield it have decided the fates of nations. Yet, for all this struggle, there has been a tenuous balance between those who seek to strengthen the mortal races and those who seek to lord over them. But now, amidst the shadowed boughs of the ancient forest known as the Dead Irol, a powerful master of the necromantic arts has called forth the very dead, risen to his command. Shambling forth from the carpet of dead leaves, these undead now serve his purposes. They search deep underground, seeking an elder evil that, if harnessed, could allow this master of undeath to rule over the entire world, forever tipping the balance towards evil. However, brave individuals have come forth to search these dark woods, driven by righteousness, wanderlust, or their own thirst for power. They have gathered together to oppose the minions of darkness. And few are aware that their victory is now the only thing that can prevent the oncoming age of darkness. <laughs> That's a pretty good evil laugh. My son loves doing evil laughs, and I'm going to have to play him that, because that was pretty good. This is, I believe, just for the story, at least based on what the page says over here. This is for the story alone. It's not for the door interactions. The door interactions should be added later, ideally. Uh, this is $16 for around five hours of content, which is an interesting point, by the way. If you enjoy some of these things, you don't need to own the game. This could be just you diving into the story. Like, hey, I want to, you know, experience the Chronicles of Girl story because I think it's pretty cool. Or in particular, the Ice of Fair and Guard, when we get up to that, is a very, very cool story. It's just in the level of detail and depth and immersion added to that one. You could buy the narration for one of these things and literally just have a story of five hours, 20 hours and all that. You may lose the interactions along the way that you had, like, you know, you just dove into a dungeon, you defeat a bunch of monsters, but you'll still get a sense of what's going on and you'll be able to just you know, not even play a game. Maybe you'll finally understand all the things that your friends are talking about, because that's what I do with my friends. I just randomly talk about it. Remember that point in the Chronicles of Nugger story? Also, this is Deck of Wonders over here from Fury Games. This is one I didn't even know had, had narration until recently, but... When the gods abandoned Elladale, moving on from the world like children move on from a toy, fate alone chose to remain. She had fallen in love with the world seeing a charm and beauty in its flaws that the other gods could not. Even though it meant eternal separation from her divine kin, fate chose to bind herself to Elladale rather than abandon it to darkness. Over time, however, Elladale abandoned her. The subtleties of fate were always lost on the mortal world, 
and they slowly tired of her guidance. It was all too easy to ignore fate and chase their own selfish ambitions. Every faction insisted their plans or their leaders were blessed by fate, but none were actually willing to seek out her wisdom. Some even blamed her. This is a longer one, I'm not going to finish this one. This is 37 minutes, not this. This, this the, the full experience is 37 minutes, but only $4. But I really like the music beating through that one. Again, this is where, like, if you've played Deck of Wonders, I played it way back in the put phase. I never even covered the, uh, I didn't cover the, the crafting campaign. I played it way, way back. Uh, it's a solo slash co-op game, small Hearthstone vibes as you try to play out your cards. It's, again, in solo or co-op, you're taking out the baddies. But I didn't even realize what level of extra they had in here. But I really like the slow slow adding of things throughout the narration over there. They had like, you know, started off with a little bit of background noise, a little bit of music beating throughout, the trinkling of coins. Very, 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 very well done. We have Detective over here, which I've never played or heard of this one. I Meaning I've heard of the game. I didn't know they had audio narration. Around Angie an hour. Gosh was in love minutes, with Charlie Muggs. She'd always had a thing for bad guys. And Charlie was as bad as they came. She was working out of Brenda Allen's whorehouse when he caught her eye. The rest, as they say, history. Charlie had been called up by Jack Dragner to begin expanding the Mafia's drug business into Long Beach, but he soon became obsessed with building his own empire and began spending less and less time with Angie. The less she saw of him, the more desperate she became. Until one day, Mudge had had enough. He walked out and threatened to kill her if she ever bothered him again. Devastated, she began seeing Dee DiCaprio instead. He was a poor replacement for Charlie, but Dee wasn't complaining. Muggs was a liability, and his usefulness had come to an end. It's a very different vibe from the general fantasy trend you'll find in a foreteller. We have Dungeons of Infinity, which I've played, but have not on the Fortel app. This is $12, $13 for three and a half hours of content. Why is it? That might be Isofer and Gar. Let me try this one. That day, or the next, or even the one after that, when Sir Fenrin finally made her full report to the king. First, there were celebrations for the princess's return with speeches and toasts given for the brave heroes who brought her home. Indulf never appeared at the castle in all that time. Several weeks after the rescue, an unfortunate merchant found a body on the side of the road. It was so severely burned that it couldn't be identified, but the scraps of its once fine clothing were in Indulf's colors. Rumors and speculation abounded, but eventually it became assumed that he had indeed been heading to the palace alone. He had run afoul of some demonic creature that had escaped the dungeon before the rockfall. The giant is in a full berserker fury, swinging his club madly from side to side. It is all the heroes can do to defend themselves. Akachi sees a momentary opening and darts in, his blade striking out and bouncing off. I like this stuff. I like this stuff. Moving on to near and far. Sorry, it appears nothing is playing at the moment. You visit the town of above. A pleasant place with beds and cider to spare. At the local inn sits a blue cat, a mechanical man, and a mayor with a huge mustache. Traveler, perhaps you could help us, says the mayor. But now that we've become so prosperous, there's a growing movement to build an army and exact revenge upon the barbarians that burned our last village and drove us here. Uh, would you convince them to forget the past and move on? Do you convince the town folk to forgive and forget? Or do you help the townsfolk plan their attack on the barbarians? Forgive and forget, obviously, those barbarians are going to mess you up. You, your townsfolk are not the same level of combat that you necessarily need here. We have Now and Never, same publisher. Ten hours of content here. Twenty years ago, the crystal meteorite landed in the wastes of Arzium, sending swarms of monsters across the desert to destroy your home. They left the monument unlivable 
and you and its inhabitants became refugees, waiting for the chance to return. Now, the monsters are weakening. As their numbers dwindle, the monument is free for its citizens to return. Though the familiar buildings have crumbled and the streets are filled with rubble, you can still imagine the warm fires and hearty meals you enjoyed here. Other wanderers have also come home, ready to rebuild the city. But you will need to bring back even more refugees in order to reclaim and rebuild this ancient place and defend it from its enemies. You must also learn why the monsters are losing strength. There are rumors of the creatures slowly petrifying, turning to ash in the lands around the monument. But will they remain a threat? Someday regaining their full force and attempting another invasion of your home? You must not let that happen. I really enjoyed Now and Ever. I didn't go through the full uh, solo story. I have like a whole way of engaging with it that's much more story based. Then we have Sleeping Gods. Also, my favorite one is coming up, Isofarian Guard, which is easily my favorite audio narration from any game. Although, genuinely, Foreteller gives a lot of these a run for the money. This is the base game, Sleeping Gods, not uh, Distance Guys, which is coming to you. anchor near a massive statue of an eagle and dive into the sea where the old painter told you to find the cave. You swim through a dark opening in the rock and surface in a chamber filled with tunnels just out of reach. Raphael finds a bamboo ladder and you follow one of the tunnels to a chamber, well cut, stocked with books, bed, rug, and table. Giving lush light from the jungle outside is a large opening in the cave wall. There's a shuffle to your left and you turn and face a hairy figure breathing like a steam engine into your face. Do you A, run from the Thomian, B, talk to the Thomian, or C, attack the Thomian? See, this, this is interesting. Because, I mean, they say over here, whether you're a fan of the game or just looking for an immersive audio experience, I kind of want to get my hands on Sleeping Gods, this Tides of Rune, because what I said earlier about how you could just go through an experience alone, I'm curious how well that works. I think Sleeping Gods itself is almost a choose your not I almost, it is, it's a choose your adventure kind of story as you wander around the world. And I really enjoyed playing through it, but I'm curious whether the Foreteller app would almost let you be able to properly experience that, or whether you need the cards. Meaning, can I just dive into the app, hit play on things, and just like, as I'm working, just have a background experience as I run from the Thonian? Was that what it was? I'm curious. I might, like, try this and then pin a comment. Check for a pinned comment below. I think I'm going to try to dive into Sleeping Gods and see whether I could experience Sleeping Gods without even playing the game. I'm very curious about that. Look for a pinned comment down below. I'll let you know. We have Ice Guard. One of my favorites, if not my favorite. Ice Guard returns audio samples. I love this one. Pavel and Yana are glowing. This is where I fell in love with Foreteller and Ice of Guard for the very first time. I'll timestamp this appropriately. Pavel and Yana are glowing. You blink your eyes, but nothing changes. They just stand there, glowing. Stonebound. The words form in your mind. You immediately begin scrambling for other explanations. A trick of the light, a hallucination, anything to explain how two people can be standing right in front of you, glowing. Captain? Yana's quiet voice pulls you out of your thoughts. You look up to see she's staring at you. What? Your voice catches. You can't seem to remember how to speak. Captain, it's okay. Everything will be okay. She smiles and places a small stone in your hand. Time ceases to exist. You're surrounded by an immense presence that threatens to overwhelm your senses. Pieces of your life flash before your eyes. Your father teaching you how to string a bow. Fishing for striped fish in the hole in the lake ice. Laying in the loft as mother's stories fill your head with wonder each night. 
you also see darker things. Stealing a chicken from Brother Fen's yard. <laughs> Bloodying Carl's nose in a childhood fight. The terror of your first battle. The face of the first soldier you ever killed. Just a boy whimpering for his life as you struck again and again, trying to silence him. You look up and see a vast darkness stretching out before you. Tenebrous. It rolls over you like a fog, burying you in shame and regret. Suddenly, a voice calls out to you from beyond the chaos. You turn to the voice, and the darkness is shattered. You breathe in, out, and everything is okay. When you finally open your eyes, your guards are all around you. Pavel, Yana, Catherine, Yuri, Vera, and Karzin. You look at each of them and see that you are all something more now. Stonebound. The word comes to your mind again. In the back of your mind, the voice is still there, speaking to you, guiding you. You sense that it's calling you to a valley. The Valley of Lux. Guards. Your voice is odd in your own ears. I know not what is happening, but I know that nothing will be the same again. Your words seem to break some strange spell, and time resumes. I can see that you all have experienced something like what I have. While we have been fighting our petty wars, a great darkness has come upon us unseen. Your guards are silent, no doubt reliving their own experiences with the enveloping shadow. But fear not, for there is a mighty presence who guides us now. At this, your fellow Stonebound look up hopefully, and there are even a few smiles. We can all hear the voice calling us to the valley, and I wish to go. But I feel it is my duty as captain to warn the king of what is coming. You continue before there can be any objections. Carson, you are the most experienced guard here. I want you to lead everyone to the valley while I travel to Silni. If I can make the king see the truth, we can strike a mighty blow against the shadow. Carson looks at you intently. <sighs> captain, I will do my best, but... I can't help thinking you're making a mistake by trying to convince the king. Perhaps. But I owe it to the people of Isofar to try. They must know that the Stonebound are real. When I'm done, I will meet you all in the valley. You give one last look to your guards, your fellow Stonebound, before stepping on the road to Sony. That starts the Isofarian Guard, which is like 15 hours of content, 300 hours of gameplay, 15 hours of an audio narration, 300 hours of gameplay, a whole lot of game that I still need to dive into more. Then we have Kinfire Chronicles, which this page looks very different. It doesn't even look like they're... Oh, this one doesn't look like they actually have anything. Oh, interesting. So Kinfire Chronicles doesn't yet have samples here, so we'll ignore that one. But over here in Sleeping Gods, Distant Skies, which is the last one, this is for the upcoming Sleeping Gods. San Francisco, 1937. Your cargo plane flies through a portal in the sky, transporting you to a rugged landscape filled with bizarre creatures, scheming gods, and untold dangers. But can you find... That's more of an advertisement. This one's more. A woman by the lake sure got her attention. I could see half her organs through her bare ribcage. She said that Mikra was keeping things from us. <laughs> You'll soon learn not to trust this place. Everything and everyone here is mad. It's a tangle of myth and magic. I don't pretend to understand it, but I can tell you one thing. I've had enough of it. I want to go back home and see my children. Don't think I'll be doing much traveling again if we ever get out of this wretched place. And that's it. 
that is basically everything they have so far, at least everything they have that you can currently see on their site. Like I said already, they have more stuff coming. They have Tenerys Adventures at the very least. They have, I think they have other things that they've announced, but I don't remember offhand what they are. But it's Forteller. This is basically, like I said already at the beginning, this is an advertisement for Forteller. Not one, not one they paid for, not one they asked for, not one they know is coming. It's just that I think Forteller enhances your experience. I think it improves the experience you have playing games. And then that combined with the Chronicles of Dunergur giveaway, and I was like, this is a good opportunity to talk about Forteller and how I think it might improve your gaming experience. And check for that pinned comic, because I'm very, I'm going to try to go through Sleeping Gods Distance Guys, or not Distance Guys, uh, uh, the regular one, Sleeping Gods Tides of Rune. I played through the game once, but there's so much content in that game, you, you can't possibly experience everything. I'm curious to see how much, how it's different, or what I experience as I go through it, just purely narratively, and nothing else. In any case, until next time, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co. Hope you enjoyed this video, good luck to you on the contest, and until next time, I hope you have a good one.